Absolutely, this organization has DNA, uh, and it's DNA about values. We really feel like we're a big family here, and we try to you know, treat our employees that way, and in turn, we feel they treat our clients that way. 100 years of ownership in one industry is truly a unique attribute, and it gives us significant credibility. I can't believe the size and the importance uh, of the Russell A. Farrow Company has become. The company is very generous, very community-minded, and that was all set right there in the very beginning. 1910 is when Russell A. Farrow arrived in Windsor. There were ads in the paper trying to draw people here and saying that Windsor was a booming community. It meant there was business. There was business commerce between the two cities. And he started doing his business on the ferry boats. Mr. Farrell worked hard. He wouldn't send somebody. He would go. He actually rode on those ferry boats. He did the business himself. He did the paperwork. This is the way he conducted his business. In 1911, which is the year he started his business, right across from where the tunnel is today, was Sir Wilfrid Laurier, the Prime Minister of Canada. And he was at this big rally. Everybody went to that meeting. And what was the talk about? It was reciprocity. It was free trade with the United States. He was running in an election, and 5,000 people in Windsor came out to hear him talk about free trade with the United States. To Russell Farrell, this would be sweet music, because here he is starting a business. Free trade is exactly what he wants. I guess he foresaw that there was business to be done, and he was groomed in the brokerage or customs business because his father became the Deputy Minister of Inland Revenue and Customs and Excise. There were a couple of factors that he didn't count on, and one of them being that Laurier lost the election, and Borden was anti-free trade. So the day after the election, I'm sure Russell A. Farrell sat in his customs office on 3 Willette Avenue and thought, well, this was a mistake. And the other thing that he didn't think of, or didn't consider, was there would be a war, and he would go off to war. The business stopped while he went overseas. Then when he came back, he started up again. Initially, he was on the riverfront, but eventually he ended up living in Walkerville, becoming the mayor of Walkerville. He was mayor for three terms. Everybody loved him. He always was trying to help people that didn't have anything. When I went for my broker's exam and sat across the table from the older customs officer, and I gave him my application form when I walked in, and he looked at it and said, Farrell. I said, well, that was my grandfather. He said, oh, he was a great man. I said, well, unfortunately, I didn't know my, you know, my grandfather, but I heard stories. And he said, well, let me tell you a little story. He was in a shop, it was a clothing shop. He saw this man looking at an item from outside the shop. And so when he came out, he, he, he spoke to the man, and Russell said, you would like that? And he said, oh, if I could afford it. So Russell went back into the shop, bought it, and brought it up and gave it to him. And that shows you some of his generosity, but also not just so much generosity, but paying attention to people. Honesty, integrity, it was, it was brought up in the family, you know. It's passed from generation to generation. It's just like in your genes, you know. It certainly is there by example, and it's been followed like that all the way down the company's history. There are a lot of custom brokers in Windsor, but Farrell was number one. Well, he died so young, he died at 58. Now, how many men in their lives can accomplish as much as he did in 58 years? Grandpa and Grandma laid a great foundation. And that foundation was built upon by my father, my uncle, and my aunt. And I remember when I started, my aunt had an office in the basement, as my dad did. My Uncle Bob was the president. He was a pilot in the Air Force, had a little plane, had a houseboat, you know, kind of had the world by the tail. He was more the public guy. My father was the behind-the-scene worker kind of guy. And then, unfortunately, my uncle passed away at a very young age. And that's when Dad became sole owner of the corporation. Huntley was a very down-to-earth, likable individual. Huntley was always somebody who uh, I felt that I could look up to. My father's vision to buy computers 
something that my father embraced very quickly. When I came to work for my dad, the company was 60-ish years old, but really hadn't grown in leaps and bounds. There was an office in Chatham, there was an office in Cambridge, and then there was the Windsor office. They made a good living, and they employed you know, 20 people, and they were comfortable with that. My dad's father wanted the boys to have the business. My father was the same way. I think we both knew that this is where our heart was. For dad to turn over the, the reins, here's this kid just because his name is Pharaoh, and he's the boss, and where's this company gonna go? Fortunately, we had the people, we had a reputation, we had a foundation. We were very well respected. We just had to build upon it. For me, I was wanting to expand. I felt that if we didn't have a presence in other cities that we weren't going to be able to do the kind of business we wanted to do. I got a phone call one day from this gentleman that was much older than I was. He was crying and he said he was in trouble and he said, well, I don't know what to do and I don't know who to reach out to, but had your grandfather been alive, I would have called him. So I went down to see him and he had had an employee who was stealing from him. He wanted to sell his business to try to recover some of his money gave me his financials and I came back and I met with my dad and our accountant and lawyer and said maybe we should buy this guy and help him out. And our accountant and lawyer looked at him and kind of chuckled and said why are you wasting your time? So I looked at my dad and said what do you think dad? And his answer was what do you think your grandfather would have done? The next day I got in the car drove down to Woodstock and bought the company. That's our very first acquisition, Underhill Custom Brokers. And there's others that came after that. 